could recite the Code Napoleon in the middle of a love scene and they wouldn't notice. Tonight, Lily Palmer stars as the legendary actress Sarah Bernhardt. Two nights take a week. With Georgia Southcott as her maid Marianne. You just stand there in the wings and watch. In a television adaptation of the stage play by Ruth Wolf, Sarah in America. This evening's host is Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. Sarah Bernhardt. The very name has become our synonym for actress. But what was she? What wasn't she? I had the good fortune as a small boy to see the great Bernhardt and what I later learned was her final performance on the stage. <laughs> I can't pretend to have been much of a theater critic at age 11, but I still remember the awe with which my mother, who took me, said the name. The star of the Comédie Française at uh, 23, Sarah was famous on three continents. She made and lost fortunes. She had dozens of love affairs. She flew over Paris in a balloon. She painted and sculpted, nursed wounded French soldiers in World War I, gave birth to an illegitimate son. She lost a leg and went on performing. She kept wild animals for pets. To say that Sarah was a beauty, considered so for half a century, does not begin to explain the sway which she held over people's hearts, especially in, in this country. America in the 1880s was just the place for bigger-than-life figures like Sarah Bernhardt. Those not fortunate enough or <laughs> old enough to have seen the divine Sarah, as she was called, got a special chance recently at the Kennedy Center's Eisenhower Theater to see Lily Palmer single-handedly bring to life Sarah Bernhardt and the host of characters who revolved around her, making real this incredible French legend who descended on our shores in 1880 like nothing we've ever seen. A band? Yes, this is my first trip to your country. Oh, a lovely journey. Just one little hop, et voila, here I am. Oh, I'm sure I shall be enchanted with America. Imagine, this morning, I poked my head out of the portal, and I saw all those little boats guiding us to the harbor. And at that very moment, the sun came out. It was an omen. I had said to myself, if the sun is shining when I reach New York, they'll like me. Look, you like me, won't you? Excuse me, monsieur. What are you doing? What are you doing with my trunks? My aunt, did you give them the keys? Well, I don't care if you're a customs man. You have no right to go through my luggage. Jared, Jared. Where is that man? Mr. Jarrett is my manager. He'll explain to you. My papers. Sarah Bernhardt. Uh, uh, Sarah Bernhardt. My God, he's never heard of me. <laughs> I'm an actress. The actress. Your president's widow, Mrs. Lincoln, was on the same boat, but it was I who got the ovation. My young, what is that man shouting out there? I think I heard my name. Look, he's handing out pamphlets. Run and get me one, will you? Are these dresses new? Do you think I'm going to sell them? Monsieur, who in your country would like to buy 25 Greek togas, 30 kilos of grease paint, 45 gowns of imperial France? We are an acting company, and those are our costumes. 50 actors traveling right through America. Oh, I don't know the names of your cities. <coughs> Come see me tomorrow at Booth Theater. I'll send you tickets. Oh, you will release my luggage. If I what? If I post a bond of $5,000, I'd rather perform naked. <laughs> a pamphlet from a bishop? Our shores must be protected from this Sarah Bernhardt, this actress from the capital of wickedness, this female demon sent from modern Babylon to corrupt 
The new worm. My aunt, take a note. My dear bishop. No, no. My dear colleague, why attack me so violently? We actors ought not to be so hard on one another. With profound understanding, yours sincerely. Oh, Jared, at last, take over. Well, that was a jewel of a welcome to the city. I warn you, Jared, you'll better make me a fortune on this trip. Won't be hard. They know me already. Did you see all those crowds at the dock? What? You paid them to come? You paid for the band? The bishop? You hired him? <laughs> We're going to make fine partners, you and I. After all, why did you ask me to come? Because I'm a great French actress? They don't speak French, how can they judge? No, you asked me to come because I'm a great showwoman. And that works in any language. I don't see any cowboys. Driver, drive us past the Indians, please. What, no Indians? Why did I leave home? Peace at last. I will not be interviewed now. What do you think of this man, Jarrett? Do you think I've put myself into the hands of a madman? I trusted him because he looks like King Agamemnon. Tall, 70 or more, silver-haired. I like a man who comes right out and says, I made my way in life with the aid of two weapons. Honesty and the revolver. Brutal, daring, ruthless. Exactly what I need in America. All right, Jared, I'll see them. My own, my things. The rose, the hair. Let them come in. Come in. Come in, gentlemen. Sit anywhere you like. Ask me anything. I'll tell you everything. You notice I did not promise to tell the truth. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, gentlemen, but it's hard on the nerves coming to a strange city. I had to unpack a little. My brush and my comb and, and, and my linen with my motto on it. Comem, in spite of everything. Picture of my son, Maurice. This? Oh, no, this is Ramses, my crocodile, my pet's crocodile for years. Now he's stuffed. I had to punish him. He swallowed my cat. <laughs> swallowed it whole. One gulp. Now he's her grave. Portable, though. Hmm? I like to have my things about me. <laughs> no, no. I never wanted to be an actress. As a matter of fact, I wanted to be a nun. I was brought up in a convent. Yes, my mother's Dutch. Yes, she's Jewish. Yes, I'm Catholic. No, my father was not Pope Pius IX. <laughs> what business is it of theirs that my parents weren't married? They're hinting my mother was a woman of easy virtue. She was. Not that that's easy, believe me. Marriage is the one indiscretion I have yet to commit. I must be free. That's why I left the Comédie Française. Those rules. Late for rehearsals, five francs. Insult a colleague, 10 francs. Leave town without permission, 20 francs. Well, one day, I went for a balloon ride. And the balloon drifted, drifted too far. And they fined me for going out of town without permission. Of course, I refused to pay. So you might say, I drifted out of the Comédie Française. No, I don't always sleep in a coffin. I do do it sometimes. Why? To get used to death. One should take what one fears most and force oneself to do it. Now I'm fearless. The questions. Am I superstitious? Of course I am. Do I like cheese? Yes, I like cheese. How many lovers have I had? A modest portion. 
That's what we are, we French. Superstitious cheese-eating lovers. <laughs> Gentlemen, sorry. I'm opening tomorrow with Adrienne Le Couvreur, and I haven't seen the stage yet. Why Adrienne? Oh, I'll tell you. Adrienne Le Couvreur was an actress of the Comédie Française. And since I no longer am one, it amuses me to play one. Besides, she has a beautiful death scene. And nobody dies like I do. I am a magnificent success. They love me here. Jarrett's promised me gold, but so much. I'm wallowing in the stuff. <gasps> what am I going to buy myself? A diamond lavalier? Common. There's an elephant for sale at the Milwaukee Zoo. It's a bit bulky for the road. What do I really want? Oh, I want ease and comfort and luxury. A train, a private train. The best that Chicago has to offer. Now look what Mr. Pullman has designed for me. The Sarah Bernhardt special, my private train. Oh, it's like a mansion on wheels. Have to get onto it. Ah, oh, oh, there, I'm part of it. What, Jared? No, I'm not coming back. What, what danger? I'm fine. I love it here. This is how I live. Risk. Oh, I must go to the brink. I have been vanquished and overwhelmed and divinely ennobled by your land. I hate to go so soon, all over in a minute. My friends. Oh, Jared. They're not paid to come this time. Yes, I know you're fond of me. I'm fond of you, too. Oh, my friends, I hate to say adieu. These last six months have been filled with sights and sounds and moments I shall treasure forever. Farewell, America, till the next time. The American tour became habit forming for Sarah, bringing her back every five years. Over the next 25 years, she would make five each more successful than the last. Sarah not only performed over a dozen major roles on a single tour, but personally directed and supervised every detail of her company's production. She played in, well, theaters, of course, but also beer halls and, <laughs> and a skating rink. One night is um, Phaedra, the next is Theodore, as Joan of Arc, the Maid of Orléans, as Napoleon's son, the Little Eagle. Americans who had never heard of these plays and didn't understand a word of French, came to see Sarah. Well, many in Paris said that she liked the color of American gold. Huh, maybe. Lord knows Sarah needed it to support her theatrical ventures, her freewheeling life, and the needs of a host of hangers-on. But there were other things about America which kept her coming back. From the beginning, with Sarah and America, there was always an affair of the heart. this young Mr. Schubert, it must say, farewell tour on top. I want every man, woman, and child in this country to feel a need to buy a ticket. They come as they know this is their final, their last chance to see me act. <laughs> it is my final tour. Hard to believe my first trip here was 25 years ago. Of course, I've been back every five years since then. But at 62, you can't expect me to look forward to yet another tour. Five years from now, can you? 
I don't look a day over 30. Yes, I know. Eleonora Duz is not even 50. She's already decaying around the edges. But me, it's miraculous. I can play any romantic lead I ever did. Oh, so you're young Mr. Schubert. I'm glad to meet you. You're privileged to be managing me on this trip. Oh, not at all, not at all. I always go with the man who makes the highest offer. <laughs> Mr. Schubert, let me see the itinerary, please. Well, go and get it then. No, this is nothing. This is nothing. Go, go on, go on. I tell you, it's nothing. <sighs> Ridiculous accident. Happened a few weeks ago in Rio de Janeiro. Last act of La Tosca. I'm standing on the parapet in order to jump over and kill myself. And I very nearly did. The stage hands had forgotten to put the mattress down below to break my fall, and I smashed down on my right knee. It's a mess. Oh, it'll soon be better. Ah, uh, my aunt. Ah, at last. Now let's see where we'll be going. Rochester, Des Moines, and Ant But there's no indication of the houses we'll be playing. Mr. Schubert, you've forgotten to put down the names of the theaters in most of the cities. What do you mean you don't know them yet? Are you telling me the bookings aren't set? Oh, the Schubert theaters are set. Oh, marvelous. How many Schubert theaters are there? Thirteen? My dear Mr. Schubert, since we're playing well over 100 houses from here to California, that isn't quite sufficient. You were to... I appreciate that. I know that most of the theaters in this country are in the, in the, in the hands of this um, Claw Erlanger syndicate. But I thought you were going to give them a little competition. Oh, you tried. Do I understand? You've asked me to come here and can't get me booked into theaters. You can? On what condition? That I give the syndicate a quarter of the gross. My gross? My dear little man, and I mean little man. I don't care if they demand it of all actors. It is illegal. You have a new antitrust law in this country? No, I will not call my friend Teddy Roosevelt. I solve my problems alone. So do something, Mr. Schubert. <laughs> ah, here we are, my friends, playing a skating rink in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> and if we can't play in theaters, we'll play wherever we can. And now, Unable to get a barn or a beer hall in Dallas, Mr. Schubert has arranged for me to play in a tent. Marvelous, Mr. Schubert. Why don't you borrow one from Barnum? I'll never get it set up on time, this tent. Tomorrow I, I'll be playing to coyotes in a dust bowl. <laughs> night nothing and this morning by magic special trains bring thousands to my tent and cover me in presents and every night there are rows of bows young bows and weeping maidens begging for Camille's handkerchief <laughs> We play against the elements. Here in Texas, they've set up my tent on the lawn of the State House. If I look out, I can see the Capitol Dome, or I could, if it weren't for this torrential downpour. Of course I go on, Mr. Schubert, but what about the audience? Will they be able to come in this torrent? The governor of Texas has ordered the syndicate to open its opera house to us. The district attorney declares the trust illegal and insists they let us play. Yahoo! 
Sarah the Trust Buster. Me and Teddy Roosevelt, the tyrants have been vanquished. Theaters are thrown open to me all over the country. And I must say goodbye to my beloved tent. And everywhere I go, new honors, new friends, to whom I must say goodbye. Thank you for making this last tour the most beautiful, the most successful, and the happiest of all. And though you will never see me here again, remember me. Farewell, America. <laughs> I'm trying to draw out the magnificent Bernhard voice from this primitive recording is you know, it's like trying to decipher life from an archaeological fragment. <laughs> but perhaps the most telling proof of its magic is to remind ourselves that whether before a Mexican, Peruvian, or American audience, she performed always in French. Her confidence that that voice and her ability to move any audience made her willing to tackle American vaudeville. <laughs> the, the, the same Sarah who bet that she could make them cheer the Napoleonic Code was willing to bet that she could outshine the jugglers and performing poodles. And just as she could win the hearts of any nation, could make any character plausible, so she could also reverse herself, turn a farewell into a hello. <laughs> Disarming the American press in 1913 with their most cunning weapon, the truth. I changed my mind. America's my lifeblood, and every now and again I need a transfusion. I don't think three farewell tours are too many, do you? <laughs> no, I'll tell you the real reason why I'm here. Do you remember my theater? The beautiful Théâtre Sarah Bernard doesn't support me anymore. My dear son Maurice is bleeding me dry. He's become a gambler, and I'm his security. Where's the press? Don't they know the hour of my arrival? Couldn't have happened while my dear Jared was still alive. He died on tour with me years ago. Ah, oh, there you are, gentlemen of the press. You very nearly missed me. Why yet another farewell tour? Oh, the others were just rehearsals. This is the final one. As a matter of fact, I'm traveling with my coffin. Just a ruse to fool the eye of heaven. If you didn't know I was 69 and a great-grandmother, You'd take me for 30, wouldn't you? I've been endowed by God with an ageless face. That's what Lou Telligan says. And when a young man says that to you, <laughs> you must believe him. Oh, Lou, come, come in, come in. Gentlemen of the press, I want you to meet my new leading man, Mr. Lou Telligan. How old is he? 35. This American obsession with numbers. All you need to know is that he's tall and blonde and has eyes of Delft blue. And he's, he's a very promising actor. Mr. Edson, my advance man, will give you his biography. Uh, yes, it's true I shall be appearing in vaudeville this time. Mr. Martin Beck asked me and I finally said, Yes, but please not between the monkeys. Oh, this is my, is my Cocker Spaniel with the American name Spot. Mr. Beck will be opening his new theater here in, in New York in April. So this time I start my tour in California and ended up by playing the beautiful new Paris on my return. Gentlemen, why don't you go with Mr. Telligan and... and, and, and Ask him all your questions and uh, get to know him. Go on, go on. My young, the ether, quickly. I didn't want them to see how badly it hurts me today. 
They must know, and he must not know. Why don't they come? I'm playing to half-empty houses. Oh, don't talk to me about Henrik Ibsen. Everybody says, why don't you play Ibsen? I couldn't play Ibsen. I don't understand the man. He writes about ordinary people. I'm not ordinary. I'm extraordinary, and then I'm incomparable. Who is this Geraldine Farrell? Her picture's twice the size of mine in every paper. An opera singer. <laughs> She's stealing my audiences. In every city we play, and they're with her across the street. How's the house? Half full? <laughs> Half empty, you mean? But perhaps they don't want to see Sarah Bernhardt on the same bill with a whistling trapeze act and a little dancing dog. And one Mr. McCullough singing, There's a long way to Tipperary. I hear the palace has opened in New York and is not doing well. You watch. By the time I get there, I'll lay it to rest for good and all. Where's Lou? Why doesn't he come to see me anymore before the performance? Where is he? Where does he go? Every afternoon. Oh, Lou, come in, darling, come in. Come. Yes, I've seen the reviews, but that's no reason to avoid me. So they say you're, you're worse than mediocre. What does it matter? When I first started, they said she should go back to dressmaking. No, I haven't seen yesterday's review. Madame Bernhardt was wrapped in drapery from head to toe. The young and handsome actor who enveloped us so tenderly in his arms was decidedly incongruous. Well, that's bad for me, not for you. If I had listened to the critics, I'd have killed myself long ago. Look, it's all nonsense. See what it says here. It says, you and I are going to get married. Nonsense or rubbish. Lou. They have no eyes. Lou and I are perfect for the lovers. I didn't ask for a mirror. I am the freak. Sarah Barnum. The oldest woman in the world. Forty years ago, when I was barely thirty, I played Ferdinand in Paris. An older woman in love with a young man. But I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know what it felt like until now. Fool, where am I? And what have I done? Where did I let my mind and wishes wander? I betrayed the husband to whom faith binds me. And against all the laws of nature, I've fallen in love with his son. Dear gods, my passion rages at his beauty. I shudder and I burn at his dark name. He passes, and my very soul is troubled. My eyes see no more. I cannot speak. I vow to turn away, but I'm helpless. I see him everywhere in his father's face. I beg to have my beloved enemy banished. But now that he's returned, one.
once more I feel the flame. Cruel fate. The boy is blind to all my fears. I despise my life. My passion is horror. And the only release, the only peace, is death. Sometimes I think I'd rather have it off than endure this agony. I remember as if it were yesterday, standing on that parapet in Tosca, seeing there was no mattress below, making the decision to jump. And then I jumped. But I didn't think that the pain would last forever. Spot? You sniff a rat? Go. Give it a run for its money. Go. Where's Lou? See if you can find him. And make sure the stage door isn't open. See that Spot doesn't run out and... <laughs> Readers will no doubt be fascinated to hear that Madame Bernhardt's pet spaniel Spot ran out yesterday and got itself killed in Cleveland, Ohio. No doubt Madame B instructed the spunky creature to run itself directly under the wheels of a trolley bus. Perhaps she thought this would arouse our sympathy and send us to the theater to see her emote. Where do they get the license for such cruelty? what no human being would say in private to another. These strangers who don't even know who I am or what I am say to thousands in the press. When I first began to stick my head above the crowd, I never knew what venom that would draw. Never occurred to me just by distinguishing myself. What a tremendous force I was creating to bring me down. Edson. We must cancel my next engagement. Engagement at the palace in New York. Why? I cannot walk. I cannot cross the stage. No, you may not tell them I'm ill. It's just what they're waiting for. Say anything you like except the truth. Was that a purple crutch we glimpsed last night under Madame Bernhardt's cloak in Leglon? We don't mind her playing a boy of 18, but are we to believe that the little eaglet, son of the great Napoleon, was going around on a purple crutch? That was a riding crop, you bastards. Edson, contact Mr. Wood, manager of the Palace Theater. If I have to hop on one leg like a guinea hen, we'll play. My young, mark the stage. Places where I can lean, no one else must stand there. And let no one help me during the performance. If I fall, if I die, everyone stay away. It was fated I should seek this battlefield. And here, 
above the dead. See the pale victim, praying, renouncing, asking but to suffer. It is right. The battlefield should offer up the sacrifice. It must be so. The shadow of death has passed across my soul. But if the eaglet is resigned to perish, he must become the high and holy battle cry that scares the ravens and their crows in the sky. Saved the palace theater. I ensured it a long run. I, only I, after so many years, only I can bring that many people to the theater. Come, em, in spite of everything, what do they come to see? The actress? The legend? I go on, and they come. And they come, and they come. Five weeks at the palace, and never an empty seat. Is that you, Lou? Oh, come in. Strange to be going back and triumph, after all. Still, I'm glad we're returning to France, aren't you? What do you mean you're not returning? You're going to get married? To whom may I? To Geraldine Farrow. Oh. Well, why not? After Sarah, you have the best references. You treasure our memories, not I. What's there to treasure? You're a rotten actor, an opportunist, and no marvel as a lover. Perhaps Madame Farrar doesn't mind second best. She has my blessings. Get out! Get out! <laughs> that was a fine comic interview, I must say. <laughs> An opera singer. Now she can sing him to sleep. <laughs> The press, they want a final word. How am I going to sum up this journey? Let them come in. How good of you gentlemen to see me off. Yes, it's been a triumph. Every trip to America is just like going from strength to strength, from peak to peak. Well, I shall miss you too, but there's always the memory in there. <laughs> what, another trip of the United States? Out of the question. My coffin's going back empty this time. I don't want to press my luck. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen, I must not miss my boat. So for the last time, goodbye, goodbye, remember me, huh? goodbye. I don't need your assistance. Farewell, America. <laughs> Never afraid of a new challenge, Sarah, in her mid-sixties, tackled a medium where her magical voice and flawless French would do her no good. Queens are permitted to sit when all others must stand, but even the role of Queen Elizabeth could not disguise the fact that Sarah, long famous for her feline grace, no longer could move unassisted. Leaning on her beloved Lou Telligan, or any actor, or, or prop available, 
She persuaded many that she was a better actress on one leg than most were on two. Soon that boast became a tragic reality. La glorieuse blessée, like so many French phrases, it loses in translation. The glorious wounded one hardly does justice to the adoration with which her countrymen showered Sarah after she lost her leg to gangrene. She went to the fronts in a wheelchair to entertain French troops. Nearly penniless, she returned to the States, the glorious voice and talent intact. Because she had not lost the will to live and love, she returned to America, the country where her goodbyes had always proved happy ones. reception. Thank you, my friend. But I rather suspect you've come to see the survivor, not the actress. They used to come to see the strange lady who slept in a coffin. Now they come to see the strange lady who's only got one leg. Barnum's offered me $10,000 to display the thing, but you know how I hate publicity. <laughs> Must not worry you. Doesn't worry me. Ah, I know what you... Must have been saying, alas, poor Sarah, she'll never act again. And here I am, about to start a tour of 91 cities. You haven't even asked me your favorite question about my age. I'm 72. <laughs> no, my friend, no. I'm not traveling with my coffin. This time, death is not a jest. These fast new trains. Boston, Albany, Buffalo, Detroit. Give me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. Chicago, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Duluth. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether well, it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Kansas City, Denver, Nebraska, Wyoming, Oregon, Idaho. It was you. I might have known each time you spoke my name, Roxanne. It was you, Cyrano. The Pacific, the California Hills. What's the matter, my aunt? Are we headed east already? Oh, what's the hurry? Texas, my lovely tent, and the dear, dear syndicate. Tampa, Baltimore, Washington, New York. Why do you move so fast? You're always speeding. Where are we going in such, such a hurry? Mount Sinai Hospital. An operation for uremia was not on my itinerary. The doctors say I've survived, but for how long? When the writer dies, he lives. Moliere is Moliere forever. What will I be? The expert player of death scenes dies. All fades away. I only live as long as I can act. They're expecting me at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. My farewell performance, Adamo Camellia, the last scene. I can't let them down. 
Doctor says I must stay here for a full month. You've been with me for a long time, and you know the secret of my life is will. I will to do it. I'll do it. Why do I smile all more? Because I'm happy. I'm dying, but I'm happy, too. What a strange life this is, this first one. I wonder what it will be like, the second one. Speak of me sometimes. Won't you, Alma? Give me your hand. Believe me, it's not hard to die. Strange. I'm not suffering anymore. I feel better. Better than I've ever felt before. June, won't you play the other? You know something? I've even grown to like it. Don't say such flattering things to me. It makes me feel as if I were dead. Don't bury me yet. There's so many things I still want to do. Climb a mountain, ride a buffalo. I'm planning to make a film, and on the stage, I'm going to play Mephistopheles. I'm going to have a crack at him before the devil takes me. I could say, as I've done so often before, I'll never come back. But you know how I lie. I'm such a liar. I might be 21, I, 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 I might have two legs, or I might be immortal. I am, as long as you remember me. I remember you, my dear friends. Wherever I go, always. I can't say goodbye to my Yankees. I can only say au revoir, that means till we meet again. And you'll all be here, won't you? You're so kind and so youthful, so handsome, so generous and affectionate, so beloved. Farewell, America. The tour of 1916 did prove to be Sarah's farewell tour. She died on March 26, 1923. A quarter of a million Parisians came to pay their respects to the divine Sarah. What remains are the photographs, paintings, posters, a few fragments of film, and a legend of Sarah Bernhardt. And that shows no sign of ever dying.
This program will be rebroadcast Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. One week from tonight, Lee Remick and Academy Award-winning actor Paul Schofield star in Henry James' story of the clash between the cultures of 19th century Europe and America. The Ambassadors, next Wednesday night at 8. And still ahead tonight on 13, Dick Cavett talks with actress Jessica Tandy tonight at 11. Newsline is at 11.30. And episode 5 of Henry James' The Golden Bowl is on Masterpiece Theatre Favorites. That's at 11.40 tonight on 13. Kennedy Center Tonight is making available for you the official program for Sarah in America, Stage Bill. It includes background information and performer biographies. It is free for the asking. To receive your copy, send a postcard with your name and address and the words Sarah Stage Bill to Sarah Stage Bill in care of Friends of Kennedy Center, Washington, D.C., 20566. Major funding for Kennedy Center Tonight was provided by the Shell Company's Foundation Incorporated. Additional funding was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.